Online, a new report from the Wall Street Journal found that most analysts argue it is too early to raise recession red flags over these slowdowns as booming markets and strong corporate earnings are still making it easy for companies to raise capital. Joining us right now is Chris Oberbeck. He is the CEO of Saratoga Investment Corporation, a publicly traded business development company commonly referred to a BDC. Good to see you. Oh, nice to see you. Thank it. you so much for joining us. So what about those loans and the slowdown that we're seeing? How does that uh, is that emblematic of what's happening in the economy right now, do you think? Well, it's certainly not what we're seeing. In, in our segment of the market, we focus on the lower middle market, companies that make between 3 and $20 million of EBITDA. We're seeing a lot of loan volume. You know, we, we, our asset growth is, is very substantial, and we're, our, our to-do you know, our, our backlog is, is, is pretty large. M&A activity in that marketplace is very robust. So I think what we're seeing is a very vibrant economy. At, at, in that s segment of the market. As to the broader markets, and you know, there may be some seasonal factors, there may be some broad factors, it's hard to say, but certainly the core growth metrics seem to be on track. What are the public markets telling us right now? I mean, you're looking at valuations in the stock market of close to 19 times earnings. Obviously, you're looking at the, the fixed income side of things with rates continuing to be at record low levels. Do you want to buy stocks here? Um, you know, I, you know, throughout history, stocks have been a good place to be. I mean, there's obviously been some very bad moments, but over time, stocks are the place to be. They're the adjusting assets. So no matter what happens, the stocks are going to, the management of companies are going to figure out how to, you know, how to adjust, right? I mean, and it's also a question of alternatives. Do you want to be in long-term bonds at these low rates, or would you want to be in a stock where the management can make adjustments if there's more inflation, if there's higher interest rates, if there's growth, if there's slowdown in this economy, they can move to that economy. So I think the ability of, of stocks to, to adjust to whatever's coming in a time of relative uncertainty, I think, is, is very interesting. Here we are in the middle of second quarter earnings season, and the numbers have been pretty good. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So it's really the profit story that's driving this story, this this valuation story, isn't it? Yeah, and not just here. I mean, it's uh, outside the U.S., the rest of the world, Europe. You know, they're having talks about you know rolling back. You know, a lot of the stimulus that's taking place in Europe, talking about rolling that back. You know, Asia, Asian markets, even China. So, I mean, I think there's it's kind of a global growth story going on underneath all this, and I think that's probably what's underpinning this. So, would you put new money to work in Europe right now? Because Europe is at a different place in terms of stimulus. Certainly, we're going to see easy money there continue, even though Mario Draghi this week suggested that maybe at some point he'll slow things down. Do you want to buy companies in Europe? I think Europe is very interesting. Yeah. Um, I think Brexit is very interesting. I mean, everybody's so fixated on the transition, which is obviously tough and uncertain. But post-transition, you know, they could be like the new Singapore or something. And there was like, once once England is independent, they have the ability to maybe restructure their economy, their regulatory system, for the next you know for the next. 50 years as opposed to the last 50 years. And so I think there's a lot of liberation that's going to take place there. I think France with Macron, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of things over there that are, that are moving to say that, that, that you know, there, there's, there's a new dynamic yeah. going on, and that's exciting. You make a lot of good points. Even the emerging markets are seeing a bit of a, you know, loosening up recently. Let me ask you about the U.S. and, and, and tax policy, the domestic agenda here. Sure. How big of a defeat would it be if we were not, if, if we don't see health care and, and tax reform get done this year? Would that be a defeat for the markets? Um, well, first of all, I'm not sure I would write those off right now. You think I mean, it will happen? I'm not saying it will happen, but I take health care. I mean, that's such a big project. The idea that you're going to get that done right away, I mean, it's just a lot of work. It's like a huge deal. But you it's think like they'll a, get there? I think they're probably going to get there. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons why they need to get there. I mean, you can't just let, there's problems that have to be fixed. And, and so ultimately, there's still some time to get that done. On tax reform, I think hopefully they'll learn some lessons of health care, which is like a total solution. I think on tax reform, it would be much better if they went for a partial solution. Because going after all that, that could, you could be bogged down for years. Um, I think the most important thing there is that they can lower the corporate tax rate. If they can get the corporate tax rate to make the United States worldwide competitive, I think that'd be great. Yeah, and you think they will do that. I mean, is that going to impact markets? Let's say we get lower taxes. The corporate tax rate goes from 35 to 22 percent. Do you think that rallies markets? Absolutely. Yeah. Chris, great to see you. Thanks so much for weighing in. Thank you. We appreciate it. Chris Oberbeck there. More Wall Street Week right after the short break.